Hey guys, today I'd like to take a look at another mask uh, that I have uh, taken out of storage um, to show you in this video. Uh, one that I don't uh, display, but um, I thought it's worth taking a look at, and that is the 1996 Don Post Studios Staples. Uh, now, as you can see, this uh, character is um, sort of along the lines of a uh, Frankenstein's monster, um, it seems to me. And um, over the years, Don Post Studios has created um, several um, sort of um, Frankenstein's monster type characters uh, after uh, the Universal Studios license. Um, there was one called Franklin. There was a couple of other variations. Um, I think that this one is um, sort of a Frankenstein's monster character. It does have um, sort of the stitched together look of um, sort of that kind of character. Um, but um, as its name implies, instead, this one has uh, what look like metal staples uh, on all of the patchwork pieces. Now this one uh, was first available uh, in 1996. It does have on the back here um, a copyright date, which you can't see in this video, um, but a copyright date of 1995. Um, but it was first seen as a new mask, as you can see here, in the 1996 Don Post Studios catalog. And um, this was offered from uh, 1996 through 2002. So it was available for um, quite some time, for seven years. Uh, and um, what's interesting about it is that uh, it was, uh, even in its first year uh, in the catalog, um, as you saw, it was shown as a Halloween classic, even though it was a new mask. And um, I'll sort of step through some of the catalog pages. Um, so through, uh, from 1996 through 1999, it was shown as a group of masks called Halloween Classics for uh, whatever reason. And uh, so you can see, uh, here's the 1997 catalog, uh, 1998 catalog, and 1999 catalog, all similar, uh, showing it as one of the Halloween Classics. And then um, as you can also see, and I'll show you again here, its first year, 1996, uh, it was offered um, actually through the year 2000 with hands. So you can see the hands here that were available. And then uh, beginning in uh, 2000, uh, through its last year in 2002, it was just shown on a page uh, with masks known as classics. So I guess they're, they considered them instant classics uh, since, um, you know, even in its first year, it was shown as a classic, Halloween classic. But um, in 2001 and 2002, it was shown, um, as you can see, here's the 2001 catalog. And then the 2002 catalog, it was shown without the hands. So as far as I can tell, the hands were no longer available in the last two years um, of this mask being offered. Um, but I really don't have too much more information on it other than the catalog photos. Um, I actually don't mind this mask. Um, it, it was made in China, uh, as they were at that time. Um, but this one, um, it suffers from some of the problems um, that the Chinese masks had. But one that it doesn't seem to suffer from is the thinness of the mask. It's, it's actually pretty thick. Um, believe it or not, um, it's cast pretty thick, at least this copy is. Um, but it does suffer from uh, what I know what I, what I call um, the potato shape of many of those masks. They, they had a potential of being a really nice sculpt and a really nice mask. And, and as you can see, let me show you a close up here of the 2002 catalog. This sculpt actually had a lot of potential and it was actually pretty decent looking the original. Um, I guess this is probably a prototype, um, but in production, and I'm not sure exactly what caused this because it is kind of thick. Uh, it could be worse, I guess, but it sort of becomes just a rounded shape. And that happened to many of these masks from China, I find. Um, they sort of just have sort of an oval shape. A lot of the sculptural detail is, is lost. 
or sculptural form. Um, of course, you can still see the detail. Um, it also suffers from um, sort of a classic um, problem with the masks of that era. And that is, as I've shown you in other videos, the darkening of the glue. So this one has very dark brown um, glue. It, it's turned very dark. But on this mask, it's not quite as visible because of the overall color of the mask. Um, but you can see it's still um, pretty bad. Um, and the hair placement isn't exactly the best either. Um, I sort of had to brush this piece of hair off to the side, but in reality, it wants to come right down in the middle of the face like that. Um, but it's kind of a, a cool sculpt. Um, it's got some um, sort of what looks like metal plug attachments or something here on the forehead on both sides. Um, it's got a pretty cool paint job. You can see um, sort of an airbrush streak going through all of the seams uh, in the face. Um, and uh, it, it has, it's just kind of a neat looking mask. It's not too bad. Uh, slid up the back, um, as you saw. Um, and, and it's just, um, you know, it would display fairly well. Um, I don't think it's uncommon um, because it was offered for so many years, um, but it's, it's really not a bad mask. It's just one of those um, 90s masks or, you know, late 90s masks that all, all sort of had the look, um, this kind of look to it. So um, this does have the tag as I like to have on as many masks as I can um, with the name staples there. Uh, and um, so there's not really a lot more um, to say about it, not a lot to know about it. Um, I don't know um, who exactly sculpted this. Maybe somebody can help me out uh, with that information. But um, I just wanted to take a look at this one. Um, I think it's kind of an interesting mask. Uh, and that is the 1996 Don Post Studios Staples. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.